this world of evolution, we found ways to do things differently and even faster. And this is not just me talking about technology or science, even down to social situations. And one of such is hookup culture. Hmm, yes, I had to pause and say it well, hookup culture. I am Nanso Igwe and I welcome you to another beautiful episode on Catholic Faith Firm. And today we'll be talking about the hookup culture. Joining my discussion today are two very interesting people and you'll be meeting them after the short break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. This is Kathleen Faith Firm and I'm non so Igwe. Today we'll be talking about the hookup culture and my discussion will be hosted. I'm hosting the discussion, but then I have two guests. Why are you looking like that? I, I may be a host. I don't know. What. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's not just like three hosts. Yeah. Yeah. So then I have Angelo and John, John also yeah. called John Koch. John Koch. Yeah. Today to discuss with me on hookup culture. Why are you guys laughing? No, no. no I, I mean, we're good. Ah, okay. we're the topic. I believe. I believe you are good. So, yeah. what do you understand by hookup culture? So open the grounds. Oh, uh, <laughs> well. So I'll say it's I'll say it's engaging in sexual uh, activities. Sexual yes, sexual. Se yeah. se yes, <laughs> sexual, sexual escapades without. I, I oh, like that correct. Yeah. I like that correction. Yeah. Well, he, you seem he, to know a lot about that. That's, 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 that's why he was pushing the, he, he was pushing the intro to me, and I was like, "Why is he pushing it without any form of commitment, any form of emotional?" Attachment, attachment yeah. or should I say commitments? Commitments, we're talking relationships or marriage, any of that. So that's for me, that's what it is. Mm, Angela, you seem to be a pro in this. So what, what <laughs> yeah, let's, do you let's think? Let's re craft that statement, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. No, it's, it's basically the same thing. I was just making a, a, a funny mm. joke. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, basically, I think hookup culture is the, it, it describes all the activities that go around. Um, first of all, like you said during the introduction, the speedy sexual interactions and connections yeah. Yeah. Um, that happen yeah. outside of, well, let's say in, in, in a non-Christian sense, outside of proper commitments in a relationship, yeah. then when we add the Christian layer over it, marriage. outside of marriage. So. Mm, so now why do you think that young people involve themselves in this? <sighs> hmm. That one entered at Yeah, it's a, <laughs> is there things that young people do? Yeah, yeah. I see. But why do you think it's so rampant today? Because if mm. you check conversation online, you see people saying, "Oh, hookups," and then you, it's very easy to actually see these things, and people are no longer yeah. ashamed of it again. I mean, it's no longer hidden; it's everywhere now. So I'm going to play the blame game. Mm, why? Yeah. Okay. I'll say we're dealing with a generation that grew up on TV, watching what we call movies. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mention a particular production. Mention it now. Like, they grew up on Hollywood. Okay, yeah. So, you watch a movie, the longest movie will be three hours. Within three hours... That's Bollywood, though. Okay, <laughs> two hours plus, yeah. Two hours plus. In fact, that's why I said the longest movie yeah, you can see, hours. the duration will be three hours. At least be so, like... so, it's like within the few minutes in the movie, bam, 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 boy meets gear, uh, boy smiles, girl smiles, Oh, how are you? How are you? Next next scene, they are, they open the door into the room, and then mm -hmm. the next thing is in the morning. Passionate stuff. Yeah, passionate, and it's in the morning. So we see this back to back, back to back, back to back. When you grow up, it programs you. So you it just seems like a normal thing. Yes. Game. So when you think about sex, you just remember a scene from one of your favorite movies, and you're like, oh, so this is how it should be. And then now people grow up and not being used to because. You on the, I mean, you're, we're Africans, right? Sex is not something you discuss in the family space. So you don't see your parents discussing anything. Matter of fact, we don't even know how they produced us and the babies yeah, they, around. I know how, by handshaking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we only understand sex in the context of what we've seen from these movies. Mm -hmm. So every, so because we're the generations that grew up in, um, you know, immersed in, this uh hollywood or uh, should i say influence yeah, it's just movies. easy yes it's just easy for us to just see sex in that form mm. i'm not saying that's the only reason but i'll tell you that's for me i feel like that's the number one why yeah. don't they just show us the they glorify it in the sense make exactly. it look like oh this is the right thing exactly. but they don't show us the risks involved Nothing. in having hookups so what are some of the risks involved in mm. engaging in hookups uh i mean heartbreak 
<laughs> number break. one. You eat breakfast. <laughs> More heartbreak. <laughs> uh, probably one or two SD, STDs on the side. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, one or two pregnancy scares if you're lucky, mm. or pregnancies you have to throw away, or pregnancies you're stuck with, mm. and then your life, you know, goes yeah. another way. Goes left. Um, more heartbreak <laughs> <laughs> and and trauma and trauma too that probably scars you for it well for some people they don't probably see it as a scarring man there's also the other side of it too mm. um where people now have conversations of sexual compatibility when they're finally ready to settle down yeah and even that conversation is based on what, what do you mean sexually compatible like how and yeah. then nine times of ten is because you've had so much hookups in your life you have things to compare it with um, hmm, so you, you go into the relationship instead of going in to explore your partner, you're going there with track record. Trying to, to size them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's also that part of it that's like part of the consequence. But in so many cases, it doesn't feel as grave as it should be when you're just talking about it or feeling it. I think it never really hits home until you're stuck in that position. Hmm. So, yeah. so do you think people grow out of it? But we'll answer this question when we come back from the short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is Catholic Faith Firm, and we're still talking about hookup culture. So I asked if you think people grew out of this because mm. you seem to say, oh, they heartbreak, you encounter a lot of things, STDs, yeah. this, some people have pregnancies and so many other things. You think they actually eventually grew up or grew out of it? Because I've heard people say, oh, you're doing this because you're young, mm. because you are still uh -huh. immature. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why are you <laughs> no, like you know, it's, it's, not, it's, like, yeah. it's like it's like the thing that you know guys say. Like you see the average guy that a womanizer, and you'd be like, oh, when I find when I, when I, find I, I, I settle down, and I, I found the I right say, girl. So that's this, a lie. this is the problem, right? You go from exploring, like you eat buffet for <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you eat buffet for breakfast. But wait, having buffet for breakfast, have you thought about it? Yeah, that, no, that's like, that's like, like a bucket a, list for me. That, like, <laughs> it's great, right? Soon, and now so. you're used to eating that. And then suddenly you come somewhere where they say, oh, you have to choose one from the menu. For your life. For, for the rest of your life. It's yeah. going to be a problem because it's psychological. Sex is not just an physical. Active, yeah. No, it's psychological. Now someone, let's say, we, I'm in my 30s, right? And imagine, let's say I've been active from my late teenage like years or 12, let's just say 12, 16 till 30. And now you're settling down. You've already reconstructed, you've programmed your mind a certain way. So you approach sex a certain way. Of course, you're not just going to outgrow it. That's yeah. why we're dealing with issues of, you know, extramarital affairs, affairs yeah. here and there from both sexes. I have to represent so both sexes, right? <laughs> equality. Yes, equality. Oh, please. So <laughs> we, we may feel it too. Yeah. <laughs> extramarital <laughs> affairs. So I feel like we're seeing a rise in this extramarital thing where they say, you know, it's it's led to the term men as come. Mm. But the whole men as come thing started when they were boys. Mm, I like so when that. yeah, when they were boys, but now they're men, they can't outgrow it anymore. The women, the women has come category two. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> How to yeah? When you want to lynch equality. somebody, lynch him. Yeah, I'm not uh, no, it's equality. It's it's, it's it's yeah, it's a season of equality. So for me, I feel like you don't you don't just outgrow it. You have to something has to shift. Yeah, something has to shift. Yeah. Maybe you seek help, therapy, or something. But it's not you don't or just even wake up. Jesus. So Most let me let me let me, let me weigh in like and you know you know it's funny too because when people say things like because I was going to add like it's not just even that oh men experience it women experience it we have people of all kind of level of life whether ministers of God whether people mm. in high business you like it, it, it's so it's so shocking that you come and wonder why because for example there was some one other random scandal that happened in one other place and we're having a conversation as to how does. How, how does somebody have sexual problems to the point where they become so blatantly audacious about it? Like, mm. there's some moves you see, and like, they don't care again. Like, yes. let me just you do anything. You, like, and you have so things much like, to lose. Things like this end up piling upwards. So, it's so funny where people think it dies off. Meanwhile, it keeps piling it on. Just keep so, piling. even when we say receive Jesus, I, I will say this from experience receiving Jesus does not make it go away poof. Because, first of all, mm. some, some, some people has like, this is something you have been actively condition to and probably yeah. practice for years it doesn't yeah. go away in a poof and so it will take something bigger than you jesus in the sense and then continuous work yeah to trying reform yeah. your mind in a way where Submission. and in some cases it's not even about 
turning your mind is about just running. <laughs> so now you spoke about um, um, yeah. sex being a, not just being an activity, but then yeah. being psychological. Now let's talk about emotional detachment, especially with mm. hookups like this. Mm. A lot of people say, oh, we just do it. We're not, I mean, friends with benefit, nothing yeah. is involved. Just, I mean, have sex and go. Sure. Do you think that's possible in this age and time? Even as much yeah. as people say, do you think it's something that can happen? Yeah, it's it's possible because now think so? sex is now just part of the recreational activities now. <laughs> yeah, sex is just one of Why those. Why do you say like yeah, that? Yeah, it's just like chess, play chess, play Monopoly, or just have sex. That's what it is now. Oh. And I was having a conversation with some friends, and I told them it's how cra it's crazy how sex produces humans, right? And it's now been like one of the like the most trivialized, trivialized thing. and it produces activity, like it produced yeah. me. That's how serious it, it is. Five minutes and then boom, there's another human being. Mm -hmm. That's full like full fledged human. That's how serious it is. So what we're saying is people being reprogrammed. Like I would say, it's it's psychological. People being reprogrammed to believe there's nothing to it, and eventually we're seeing we're seeing the consequences, right? We're seeing things happen over time. We're seeing those emotional, um, mental breakdown. Mm. But of course, we can't, you might, because we, you can't trace it. So the person will say, no, it's not as a result of this. But as believers, we know that there's something inside you, which is the soul, that's crying out. It's been, there's this, there's this pool happening inside. So because, you, because they've told you, no, don't look this way. Mm -hmm. Just maybe, just maybe some of these mental, things you're dealing with could be as a result of the you know the stuff you've asked because you're deceiving yourself what you're telling yourself is no it's not that serious so every day you're saying it's not that serious then something inside keeps saying is that serious and i will show you it's serious so it starts acting up so we can we, there are situations where someone is i believe this is what i believe personally that some of the situation um, some of the mental uh you know um, traumas we are yes we are experiencing can be as a result of the hookup lifestyle. Mm. That's my own, yeah. Angela, what, what do you have to say about that? Yes, I was even going to pitch in earlier because, you know, it's funny how we always say emotional issues, like, and why it's dangerous because in where part, some of us are privileged to be in a generation where you grow up hearing things like, oh, you know, sex before marriage, no sex before marriage, this and that. Some of us were born inside church where those things were like, Mm -hmm. As you were watching Nollywood, you come out from Hollywood or Nollywood and go into like church and they like pour, pastor will pour his own like, no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't. Yeah. So some of us have that programmed conscience already. But mm -hmm. now you're speaking to a generation that probably don't even understand what you mean by sex outside marriage. Is mm -hmm. a sin, yeah. Because they've never heard that narrative before. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be friendly sport. Mm -hmm. So now what's happening is that you're experiencing trauma and pain from something you didn't even expect. You don't even know where to look. Yes. Because you don't even know that this can create that kind of problem in the first place. Mm. Mm, I and like then that. it's enticing. So if it was because like I said, and, and I, I remember somebody was teaching one time and it was just a random conversation, but it was, it was a teaching on evangelism. The first thing he said was, you know, when your guys are going to evangelize, try so hard to remember that sin is very sweet. Hmm. <laughs> I like that. Let's hold that thought there. When we come out from the short break, let's just learn a little about this thing for this week. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Today we are talking about St. Catherine of Bologna. St. Catherine was born in Italy in 1413 in Bologna. When she was a young girl, her aristocratic father sent her to court in Ferrara to be a lady in waiting to the Marquis' daughter Princess Margarita. At the time, the city of Ferrara was becoming a cultural center, providing the young girls with an excellent education in music, literature, painting, and dancing. Catherine particularly excelled at miniature painting, Latin, and playing the viola. When Margarita became engaged, she invited Catherine to stay with her, but Catherine felt called to the religious life, and at the age of 14, she joined a Franciscan community. During this time, she suffered a spiritual crisis, but she had a vision of the real presence in the Eucharist that brought her consolation. Spiritual visions consoled and disturbed her at various times in her life, which we know from her work, The Seven Spiritual Weapons. 
Dissension in the community led Catherine and others to join the Poor Clares, a contemplative order founded by St. Francis and St. Clare of Assisi. Catherine willingly served in humble roles at the convent, including laundress, baker, and animal caretaker. Later in her life, she obediently left her beloved Ferrara to found a new convent in Bologna, where she served as abbess. Catherine continued in her artistic pursuits, playing the viola, painting religious pictures, including one of St. Ursula that hangs today in a gallery in Venice, copying out and illuminating her breviary, now on display at Oxford, and writing spiritual guides and poetry. In 1463, age 49, she became gravely ill and died within a few months. Her incorrupt body currently rests in Bologna. Catherine was canonized in 1712 and her feast day is March 9. She is a patron saint of artists. Welcome back. This is still Catholic Faith Forum and we're still having our discussion on the hookup culture. You were saying... Yeah, like, you know, the person said, you know, when you're going out to evangelize to the person, yeah, in some cases, their sinful lifestyle is like so destructive. Like when I mean destructive in the sense that they are heavy, having heavy repercussions. Yeah, immediate but for, repercussions. for the most part of people, they are having the time of their life. You're trying to tell them to deny themselves of something that they actually enjoy. And then yeah. I'm like, when it even comes to this issue of sex, backtrack, God designed this thing. Like, yeah. it's, it's a desire that's hardwired into your body first. Like, before we even start talking of sin or no sin, like, it's a desire that you were supposed mm -hmm. to naturally have. Then it's something designed by God. Before yeah. you even start throwing your scriptures at somebody, remember you're going against something that was designed by God and somebody is using backyard to, like, hardwire it to go on overdrive, which is what the devil is doing, right? With both culture yes. yeah. and then habits. Yeah. So, it becomes a very, very very, very tight cycle to be in. For those of us that are privileged to have other information, whether because of church yeah. or upbringing, we even have some, some buffer. I don't want to yeah. so much of an advantage, it's even a reference because it's, a, reference. Mm -hmm. it's still, a lot of us are still having serious struggles with yeah. that space. Okay, and, now let's talk about yeah. um, mm. pressure. We know that pressure from friends, I yeah. mean, Social media can even force one to engage in things like this. Yeah. How do how does one deal with this? Things like that. Mm, so for me, I say cleanse your timeline, especially if you're on Twitter. Because Twitter's rule on uh, you know what, what we call like Twitter's, content, yes, censor, yeah. yes, Twitter censoring or uh, uh, the rules are different. You see things. So when I came on Twitter, I was like, oh my God, this is literally porn out here. So I said on following. Also, I would say know your triggers. Know your triggers. So don't lie to yourself. If you're watching, if you're listening to some kind of music, very, you know, those very sensual soul they call music. It love song. Yeah, love. Wait. <laughs> yeah, it's called it love song. Yeah, in quotes, in quotes is love song. But you know this, you know the lyrics are, are making something, like it's stirring up something in you. So for me, check what you listen to, check what you see. For especially for guys, then for ladies, I say check what you read. I found this out that I love really, I love the um, novels or romantic, the romantic novels. novels yeah, are very very. I read now, small trust me. <laughs> See, when I say you're an expert, you said no. <laughs> no, it's, it's, that's the problem. Like maybe I'm not the expert to speak against you. It's the Lord that says. So I love those things that are very explicit. And then you keep giving yourself to it. So what you're doing is you're just you're just feeding because whatever you feed, you're going to bring out. So for me, I say, even if yes, there's pressure. I'm not going to lie, there's pressure. It's difficult now. Those days in the movies, what all they show is a man and the woman goes into the room. Next time, boom, morning. lights off, morning. <laughs> These days, no, 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 no. They would take their time. There was this particular movie. I was like, nah, it's not possible. This this is a porn scene. They just in, uh, you know, brought here, and we were raised, yeah, by my parents. We were raised to forward the sins, and now I live alone, and I still forward the sins. It's just, it just, it was a programming when we were younger. Once in it, they just pick the remote. Now I do that, not because I can't, yeah, watch just it, watch yeah. it. But I've seen the, I've seen the advantage. I've seen the advantage of not, you know, of not staying and and feeding myself with that. So I'll see. Create boundaries. 
if you know this girl, you don't like her like that, but you are feeling her. Yeah, maybe you guys. Why should... do you guys always say you're? What are you? What are you feeling? No, no, no. Okay. Oh, <laughs> see, like you want to go there? Okay, you please, know, there's another thing I wanted please. to say because yeah. another thing people don't also point out is, yeah, like even I, I, I even feel like calling peer pressure is like an easy cop out in the sense that no, there's really? pressure from inside. Oh, inside. Internal yeah. pressure. There's internal pressure. Like mm. a lot of things that it's, I think is like an easy excuse. You always you. Yeah. It okay, maybe let me not say it's an easy excuse. Let me not say it's an easy excuse. Peer pressure is real. Yeah, it's, it's extra, extra but yeah. if you didn't want to, if you really, really didn't, then you'll not say, okay, maybe you want to just feel cool. And I'm like, why is it that important for you to feel, feel cool? And cool. I know it's important to feel cool, but maybe there are other ways you can. But the point is, going back to what I was going to, like one, first of all, there's the inner pressure. Like there's the inner desires that you have. Then two, I mean, Nobody likes responsibility. I, I, like, I was, I was there, I was watching, and someone said, Oh, what's your dream job? And I like, I don't go to sleep thinking of work. <laughs> like, stop it. You know? Yeah. Um, and what has now happened, I mean, back in the days, or, you know, in church, they prescribe a whole list of responsibilities to hold up to, to give you access to that enjoyment that is sex. When a culture that strips off that whole layer of, I mean, mm. at one point in time, you know, it's so funny how people used to talk about how the Bible was such a misogynistic tool. And I'm like, there was a time when the Bible says things like, if you rape somebody or get her pregnant, you're forced to. I mean, I know that. So I'm like, you have to understand that there was a society where people, like somebody was going to cause that much damage and walk away for free. Hmm. That was supposed to be a tool where if you know you can't put your thing in the pants, you have to know that there's a responsibility because yeah. you're about to create life or affect a life. If you're not willing to stick through to the end, then, don't then walk it. away. Don't start it, yeah. So, um, one, there's a part of people, people like the, the joy now of not taking rest. I remember the, there was also a time where, <laughs> it was also a time where like, you, you had to go and buy porn or something to like, look at naked ladies. And then you have come on the show, everybody's like, oh, we want to free the nipple. Oh, we want to dress how we like. And I'm like, I know you guys think you're fighting for freedom, but you have to understand like, the guys are having a good time because now yeah. we don't have to pay to see. Exactly. Now it's just there. We don't have to try so hard. I don't even have to lie to you and say I want to marry you again. Mm. Before, just, before yeah, some people had to go to, as far as marry you fast. just to and get there. Days, I mean. Now, like, I mean, you know, <laughs> and it's just a very so, so funny we, thing. Yeah, so just to, to you know, um, conclude on what we're talking about, based on, for guys, right? Mm -hmm. It's, sex is not as emotional as it is for ladies. No. It's just the truth. Sex is not as emotional as it is for ladies. Are you speaking for yourself? For most guys. For most guys. I'm, yeah. I'm not just, it's, I mean, the scientific research out there. You ask the average man, that's why it's easy for a man to say, oh, I had sex with her, but I love you. He's not lying. <laughs> He's not lying. Okay. So that's the yeah, man, This is not yes. an excuse. So No, this like, is not an excuse. There's, a, there's an this understanding. Is, this is not an excuse. So understanding that this is something, right? You will, as a believer, you need to hold yourself to a higher standard. Exactly. You have to understand that you don't just do so Paul says just because it's lawful doesn't mean you have to. doesn't mean I have to do this. Just mm. because it's lawful doesn't mean I have to do this. So you have to hold yourself to a higher standard. Mm. So have you ever thought of so like to end the show now with your yeah. bank? Have you ever thought of why are you <laughs> come back here? They're yeah, about to put you under the so... bus on national TV. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm not throwing you on that yeah. because trust me, Don't I'm, I'm good survive. like that. So I'll have survive. you ever thought of um, talking a person out of engaging in hookup? Have you had that conversation with anybody? Yeah. So what did yeah. you feel like? Yeah, I had. It was it was easy for me because I had. I mean, the person was a believer, so I had, it was easy for me to explain the consequences. And this person, in quotes, had was in a relationship. Was trying to hook up with someone else. I was like, see, for me, right, you are, it's, it looks excited. Yeah. But you are actually jeopardizing a good thing. That you already have. Yes. So it's not a problem of, because if, if it was a situation, if the person was single, I would have said, okay, maybe the pressure from being single, but the person was not single. So I told the person, I was like, see, for me, right, why don't you take time and build what you have and establish this, especially God has helped you. It's not like you're in a very troubled, troubled relationship yeah. or something. Mm. It's just a it's just a problem of getting a hold of yourself, like take responsibility and discipline yourself because it's not going to stop. 
true. Today is this one, right? There's an excuse. Oh, she was close. We are colleagues. Blah, blah, blah. Tomorrow is going to be something. And then one day you're the president and they will cancel you. On and then media. one day one paparazzi picks you up and you just ruin everything. So you either start from today by taking responsibility. And that was what Angelo was talking about. How yeah. if, it, if you don't take care of it now, tomorrow it keeps growing. Hmm. That monster is going to come for you and it's going to come for you when you. the lights, like when the lights are bright and everyone is seeing you on the big stage and then boom, it comes. So for me, that was what I told him. I said, take care of this right now. Hmm. Powerful. Lip it. Yeah. Nice. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. I really had a fun time. And I'm sure that people out there also enjoyed the show like I did. <laughs> We're not going anywhere. As usual, we have to meet with the Know Your Faith team. Stay with us. Guardian Angels. October 2nd is observed in the Catholic Church as the Feast of the Holy Guardian Angels. In 1670, Pope Clement X established this day in the Universal Calendar as a day in honor of the angels who protect us each day. Hello there, my name is Judith and I welcome you to another episode of Know Your Faith. And today we'll be talking about the Guardian Angels. Do you know you have a Guardian Angel? There are scriptural references to their existence in Matthew 18.10 and Psalm 91.11. Our guardian angels do more than just guard and protect us. They also guide, enlighten, carry out some of God's answers to our prayers, encourage and even help us to win our salvation. Here are five other interesting facts about these heavenly helpers. One, every person in the world has a guardian angel, whether Christian or not. It is believed by theologians and is confirmed in the youth catechism that every person receives from God a guardian angel. This is consistent with sacred scripture, the teachings of saints, Thomas Aquinas, Basil and Jerome, as well as experiences from non-Christians who believe they were helped by a guardian angel. Two, guardian angels are appointed at the beginning of life. As the catechism explains, from its beginning until death, human life is surrounded by their watchful care and intercession. This statement leads us to believe that angels are appointed at the very moment of the union of body and soul in the womb. Three, we do not become guardian angels when we die. Contrary to popular belief, there is no way for us to transform into an angel after death. When we die, we are separated from our bodies for the moment, but we'll be reunited with them at the end of time. We don't become angels while we wait. All guardian angels were created at the beginning of time in a single moment of creation. Four, guardian angels are here to help us. The Catechism describes a guardian angel as a shepherd who is meant to protect us and lead us into everlasting life. Their chief goal is to help us get to heaven and we're encouraged to ask for their intercession whenever the need arises. Guardian angels are not just assigned to persons alone. While most of the attention these days is given to personal guardian angels, it is a tradition in the church taught by theologians such as St. Thomas Aquinas that all countries, cities, dioceses, and parishes have their own guardian angel. So here is a question. When did you find out you have a guardian angel? I found out when I had trouble studying. There were nights when I needed to study, but my brain just couldn't retain it. I asked a friend what to do and she asked me to call on my guardian angel. I said a prayer asking my guardian angel to help me get a refreshing sleep for about 15 minutes and it happened. I was able to study better afterwards. Some of my friends have a good relationship with their guardian angels. A friend once told me she calls on a guardian angel to communicate with the guardian angel of somebody she's trying to reach on phone. And it works. The fact that I have a companion and I am not shy to ask for mundane things is huge for me. Let's say the guardian angel prayer that you should know and say each day. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day, be at my side to light and guard to rule and guide. Amen. What other interesting things have you heard about the guardian angels? Let us know in the comment section. Don't forget to share this with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, be bold, be Catholic.
Welcome back. This is Catholic Faith Forum. Thank you so much, Know Your Faith team, for that. That was a beautiful one. And thank you so much, guys, once more for being here. Thank you so much. I'll definitely you. drag you people here once more. It was fun and I Any enjoyed time. myself. Yeah. Where are you going? They're dragging me already. They're dragging. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we do. You can always watch this episode and other episodes on our YouTube channel. Also, if you want to sponsor or donate to us, you can do that by reaching out to us on the email or the phone number showing below on the screen. Don't forget to reach out to us on our social media platforms at CFF on TV. So till next time, keep, keep being saints, saints in jeans and, and shirts. shirts. Bye.